In this video, I'm going to show you a good hour 20 sample size of my new accelerator course called KDP Fast Track. Now, this course will be exclusive to members of my community inside school. Now, school is a great opportunity for you to meet with like minded people where you can share your wins, your challenges, ask questions, and you can share experiences as we grow together as a community. Now, this sample size will give you a taste of what the course is about, but if you'd like to know more, make sure you check out the description below and that will provide details to get straight access through to my community. So I hope to see you there. I hope you enjoy this sample size of the course and I look forward to seeing you in my school community. Hello and welcome to the KDP Fast Track course. My name is Romney and thank you very much for enrolling in this course to ensure that you can self-publish successfully on Amazon KDP. Now this is a light course, but it's not light on great quality content. I've fast tracked this so you can consume it within about two hours and be ready to publish. But in the future, I will be creating some amazing content that evolves around creating more high quality, low content books, children's books, book cover design, Amazon advertising, and also high content books. So you must keep an eye out for that content as it's released. Now this course will allow you to get publishing and I've always got an intention to ensure that I guide you through the principles of publishing successfully and creating the highest quality books that you can. So I do hope you enjoy this course. I'm about to move across to myself as I introduce the course properly, but this is just a welcome video and I thank you so much for joining this and I hope you get some great information and you can start publishing immediately with Amazon. All the best and I'll see you inside the course. Hello and welcome, my name is Romney and thank you so much for joining this course on how to fast track your publishing with Amazon KDP. Now I've been a publisher with Amazon KDP for four years now and I've sold in excess of 200,000 copies of books, but I've also got my books on other platforms, which I'd love to be able to share with you those experiences in this course as well. Now, as I mentioned, it is a fast track course. I wanna try and get through this information in less than an hour and a half. Now, what you need to remember is that there's gonna be steps here where you might need to take your own initiative, and importantly, you need to take action on these steps. Without action, nothing will happen. And it's one of the key reasons why people don't succeed on Amazon is because they're inactive. They get to a point in time where they just don't take that action and those steps are necessary. One of the other key things is that I'll be mentioning different software platforms and different Chrome extensions that I personally use. Now, I'll be making a recommendation for you to get these software programs. Now, this course has been on made on a budget so i want to make sure that it's affordable for you but if you do want to invest for the long term in publishing you do need to invest in tools that are going to help you to fast track that process you're welcome to go down the slow lane and you can do things manually the software that i recommend helps fast track this process exponentially by 10 times. And if you do want to get to the end point quicker, you need to invest in both your knowledge and experience, but also in the software that you're using. Let me quickly cover off what we're going to be looking at for this course. And I need to keep this a bit shorter so we can get into lesson number one. Section one is the course welcome, which we're doing right now. Section two, getting started. Then we move on to niche and keyword research, titles and subtitles, interior creation book cover creation, book descriptions, KDP book categories, the upload process and pricing for your books, then the launch and advertising of your books, avoiding key mistakes that people make, book expansion into other print-on-demand services, then key action steps, and then resources to download. Now, you'll also have the opportunity of participating in 20 lessons overall. There'll be the templates and resources you can download, but also I'm wanting to speed up this process so the timeline will be fairly short, trying to keep it to an hour and a half. Actionable steps to take immediately, and then I'm making it affordable but jam-packed with info. 
So I'm keen to get started now. Let's get into this Fast Track KDP course and you can get publishing faster than ever before. Let's get into it now. I want to use this lesson to discuss the business model of KDP or Kindle Direct Publishing. So what is KDP? Well, they are a platform which allows you to create and publish books using a print-on-demand service, or a POD. So print-on-demand means that your books aren't sitting in bulk anywhere. As soon as a customer orders your book, your book is printed pretty much on that day or the next day, and then is shipped out to the customer. If they order four of them, then four copies are, uh, are published, or sorry, are printed. But... You don't have any books that are sitting in a, on a factory floor waiting for an order to come through before they're sent off. They hold the digital asset, being your files, and then once it's ordered, they are put through the printer and that book is printed. They also take care of the distribution. So once the book is printed, then they will take care of the distribution and the mail out to that customer. They also take care of the payments through the customer, the logistics, customer service. So if there's any returns required, then they take care of that. The great thing is if a customer purchases your book but returns it, you're not out of pocket. So that's the great thing. So a creator or an author receives a royalty payment after the above factors, uh, sorry, after the above costs are factored in. So therefore, if you were selling a book for $14, but the printing and distribution costs from Amazon add up to maybe $10, then once that's all taken into consideration and Amazon take their small percentage of the uh, profit of the book, you receive your royalty. So it might end up being $4 from a sale price of that book of 14 So what are the popular forms of books? Well, there are no content books like blank journals or notebooks, low content being coloring books, workbooks, logbooks, mid content books, which could, which could almost be classified in the low content, but they're children's books and how to guides. Then we have our high content books, which are books of maybe over 10,000 words. Now, I've created books in across all these categories. I've created or published seven high content books. Many mid-content books like children's books, quite a few low-content books, and initially when I first started, no content books. No content books have a small barrier of entry, so most people will start off with these, and then as you get to high content, the number of people that can create a 10,000-word book plus does start to reduce, but there are ways and means of doing that, and it's an area of publishing that I will expand on at another time but we will touch on it during this course. So what's the process? We well, complete your niche selection or niche research. Then you go through the book creation process. Once it's ready, you upload it with the file types to Amazon Kindle Direct Publishing. Then you do the marketing and hopefully you get some great sales and reviews and you start to get into the Amazon algorithm. And when a customer searches for your book, it comes up and you get more and more sales. And that's what I love about this business. It has global opportunity to scale. You can have one book, which you can then convert to a paperback, a hardback, an ebook, and an audio book, depending on the type of book. And then you can convert that same book into uh, multiple languages and sell it across the world, across multiple platforms, and not just Amazon KDP. So it has scalability and the great thing is the more books you create or high quality books that sell the more of a passive income stream you create so that's an overview of the kindle direct publishing business model and hopefully that gives you a bit of an idea of how it all works i wanted to use this lesson to give you an idea about my journey of publishing how it started and how where I am right now. So I started my publishing journey back in December of 2019. Back many years ago, I was a physical education teacher and I then moved into the executive world where I was a national contracts manager for a major company in Australia. And then I published my first book and it was a goal setting book. And the book didn't do particularly well. 
but I published it anyway, and I learned a lot from that book. It only sold maybe 10 copies. So I needed to work out a way that I could publish better and create books that people were going to love. And so I created another book called The Habit Switch, and that had some great success. It became a number one bestseller in its category. Even Brian Tracy, the famous author and public speaker and guru when it comes to time management, when it comes to goal setting, he actually reached out to me and provided a testimonial, which was incredible. So I then continued to publish my books. And in the second half of 2020, I started to get some great momentum. My journey really started off slowly, even though I had a great book that went to a bestseller. If you don't keep your foot down and continue to market that book, it does die off. And I learned that the hard way. But this is what's possible if you put in the effort and the work. Now, I'm not suggesting that these are the results that you are going to get. You might get better results than me. You might get worse results from me uh, or for, than me. But it is worth noting that things can really happen if you apply yourself to this model and stick with it. What about the 12 months? So I started to publish the books. I en ended up actually having 17 books that were published over 12 months, a combination of high content books, because I actually started with high content books. Then I transitioned into some low content books and some mid content books. But you can see that out of the 17 books, eight were strong revenue generators, but only after I started implementing the correct niche research strategies. So in that first year, I achieved nearly 20,000 US dollars in that first year of publishing. Uh, but then the second, like the very last bit of December, I really was focusing on the Amazon advertising and marketing, which allowed me to then uh, generate more sales for my books. But that is what's possible only if you apply yourself and use the strategies that I'm teaching you in this course and other courses that I have. So what are the pros and cons to Kindle Direct Publishing? Well, the pros, it is free to upload your books to Amazon. This can be a positive or a negative, I guess, because it means if it's free, there are more people that are doing it. Therefore, the competition becomes greater. If there was a cost involved with it, perhaps not as many people would do it. However, it is free to upload, so that, that is a positive if you have a low budget to begin with. You can create books that you can place up, and pretty much the process could be free if you use all the free tools. It's going to take you a lot, lot longer, and the quality of your books may be not as good, but yes, it is possible to create books for free. You have global distribution. So Amazon is across many different marketplaces in the world, but not just Amazon, you do have other publishing platforms like Pub so Ingram Spark and Draft to Digital. Amazon do all the heavy lifting for you as I explain the business model in lesson two. There is no limit to the growth you can have. You have scalability beyond your wildest dreams and also the opportunity to generate a great passive income stream. But what are the cons? Well, probably free to upload, as we mentioned, However, I haven't included them in the cons here, but there is a delay result from effort. You can be publishing books and doing all of the effort behind the scenes, but the realization of a profit after you do some marketing can be delayed by quite a while. And by the time your books get some traction and reviews and sales, it can take a while. So there's a delayed gratification element. There's increasing competition because of the opportunity to free upload and to create books for free. But if you create high quality books in uh, low competition, but high required niches, then you've got a great opportunity. Sales can fluctuate a lot. You do have that throughout the year. So you think you're going great and then sales can drop off. There is no guarantee of success. So even though you published 50 books and you might spend a fair bit of money creating those books, there's no guarantee. You might create 10 books and they might be just shit books. <laughs> You just don't need terrible books on Amazon. You've got to create great quality books. And you could lose your account. If you do the wrong thing, you could lose your account. And therefore, all that hard work is gone. And that is a segue to the next one, protecting your account. These are the top tips from me. Do not infringe on copyright. 
we'll be covering a section in titles and subtitles talking about using trademarked terms. Do not infringe, do not copy other authors' uh, covers or any other content. Stay well and truly away from that. Avoid reusing the same interiors. If you're creating a low content book or even a mid content book, just don't replicate and then try and change the cover and make it a new book. Just do a new book. Don't obtain fake or biased reviews. Just be very, very careful on reviews. Even close family and friends, according to Amazon's terms of business, are a no-no. So they must be unbiased reviews and from people that are generally giving your book a review and that have actually absorbed the information. And treat your account with respect. It's a long-term passive income stream for you that could last for 20 plus years. Look after your account, take it slowly, do the right thing, and Amazon will look after you by giving you a platform to have global scale opportunity. So hopefully that helps you with uh, an overview of my journey and also some of the important things that you need to have when it comes to protecting your account and the pros and cons of Amazon. I wanted to use this lesson to touch on this element very very briefly, and it's the mindset of publishing. I can tell you that there are very challenging times ahead, and if you think otherwise, you're in for a big surprise, because self-publishing does have many moving parts. You might see different YouTube videos where they're suggesting you can make $5,000 in a month publishing no content books. What you need to do is ensure that when you set yourself up for self-publishing that you're aware of many of the challenges that are likely to face you. Now, my first three months, I had published four or five books and had not made, I think I made five sales collectively. It wasn't until some of those initial books got some traction and I used uh, some marketing and I had got the book into the right hands of customers that things started to change. Now, you can't approach Amazon publishing expecting to be able to do it with no budget. I think it's probably setting you up for failure if you think you can do publishing on a zero budget using free tools and no marketing with no expenses. What you do need to do is ensure that you're setting yourself up for success by following the lessons that I'm providing you, but ensuring that you have a budget that you can utilize that can help market your book. Unless you're prepared to spend hours and hours creating free content on platforms like Instagram or YouTube or running, uh, or sorry, not even running ads because you can't afford that, getting onto Facebook groups and trying to market your book. But sometimes you're not allowed to do self-promotion. So set up some initial goals of what you would like to achieve that are realistic, but are stretch targets. And the first few months, you will feel quite despondent if you're not getting any sales. But also know that you're learning the steps. And for every small failure that you have, it is a lesson to learn more and expand and grow. And it's a challenge when you are when you come up against um, times when you're not getting sales. You might be spending marketing, money on marketing your books through Amazon advertising. But that is the challenge of self-publishing. And I don't want to set you up for failure. I want to set you up for success, provide you with resources. And in the coming months, I'm hoping to create an even better community of like-minded people that we can come together. You'll have access to me to be able to use my knowledge and experience to publish even better books. And so keep an eye out for that space. But in the meantime, enjoy this content. Set some goals realistic goals, get ready for the challenges that lay ahead, be prepared to outsource elements if they're not your areas of strength, be prepared to publish some books that are maybe just learning the process so you can work through those steps and invest in yourself, invest in software that will help you grow. So I just wanted to include this quick lesson. It's important to outline these steps. Some people might skip this session, the mindset of publishing, but it's important for you to know. I want to help you, but I can only help you if you're prepared to help yourself to achieve 
what is possible with publishing across multiple platforms, including Amazon KDP, Ingram Spark, Drafted Digital, and other ones that I'll uh, let you know about in the future. Okay, let's get on to the next lesson. One area that I did want to touch on briefly was the quality versus quantity argument. There are a lot of KDP publishers that go for quantity, hoping that something will stick. What I want you to think about is avoiding the quantity mindset. Don't just think that the more books you create, the more passive income or income that you'll earn. I actually think it's opposite of that because the more books you create, the less quality control you have and the less control you have over your marketing and advertising. You simply just can't keep up. By having quality, it allows you to focus on the launch and marketing of your book. If you don't do that properly, your book will die a very slow death. Poor quality can compromise your long-term brand. And poor quality will get you negative reviews and Amazon will be less likely to promote your book through their algorithm. It just works out to be better to work on quality. Don't just think that the more books you create, the more opportunities you'll have. It really does come down to having quality books that customers love. Therefore, if people are buying your books, you're getting good reviews, Amazon will want you to sell more books and will float your book to the top. And that's how their algorithm is programmed. So think very carefully about creating poor quality low content or no content books that you just put up, poor quality cover, and you need to really think carefully about this. Should you purchase an ISBN for your book? An ISBN is the unique identifying number that is given and assigned to every book published. It's an international identifier for your book. When you upload your book to Amazon KDP, you do get the option to get a free ISBN. However, your ISBN does hold key information and allows you to have some greater flexibility if you do buy an ISBN yourself. So should you buy it? Well, it depends on your end goal because an ISBN can be expensive. If you buy them individually, they can be around about 50 US dollars. If you buy them in bulk, you can get a hundred for around about 350 US dollars. So it works out to be a lot cheaper. But what are the advantages and disadvantages? Well, when you're looking at it, you need to know whether you're, if you want to sell your paperback book or hardcover online, either through Kindle Direct Publishing or another service, you require your ISBN. But if you want to publish your same book through another print-on-demand provider like Ingram Spark, you need an ISBN. If you're only planning on publishing to Amazon KDP, you could potentially take the free option. So why would you consider getting a free one? And so what are the advantages if you own your own ISBN? Well, firstly, you would have complete control of your book's metadata. And this refers to the book's description and its category, and it makes it a lot easier for outside groups um, like bookstores to discover your book. It's in your control. Secondly, you'll be a publisher on record. Your ISBN will stay the same even if you publish with multiple companies like Ingram Spark. The advantage ties back to the original question regarding ISBNs versus your own ISBN. Lastly, you cannot use your free ISBN from Amazon KDP to publish anywhere outside of Amazon. So this is one of the biggest reasons why maybe purchasing your own ISBN, which when you upload your book to Amazon KDP, you can use that number and enter it. So when you go, you can go use my own ISBN. Or if you are using the Amazon one, you can elect to use it. But where can you purchase them from? We can purchase through Bowker, which is a company um, you can use Bowker. It's Thorpe, Bowker in Australia, Bowker in the United States, and I believe it's Nielsen in uh, the United Kingdom. And all you need to do is ensure that you do purchase if you're getting an ISBN through a, a legalized or a proper distributor of ISBNs. And the cost, as I mentioned, it depends if you purchase it in bulk or individually. So I would suggest that if you are looking at 
publishing a book not just to Amazon, you buy your own ISBN. I've done that and I've significantly increased the sales of my books by publishing wider than just Amazon. But ultimately, it's your choice. If you want to start off by just using the free ISBNs for the first few books you create and then start to expand out to purchase your own ISBN once you publish more books. Getting started with Amazon KDP. The first thing that I'd recommend you do is to actually create an account. So if you go to Google and just do KDP sign up, then you'll be able to get to this link. Otherwise, just type this link into your uh, browser and you'll be able to get there straight away. The page you will find that will come up is this one. And what you'll need to do is to add your name, email address, password, enter it again and create your KDP account. The process is quite simple and straightforward. Just make sure you complete all the details, including tax and information that will help ensure that you're protecting your account and the payments that will go through. You'll need to enter bank account details to ensure that the money, if you earn money through your royalties, goes to the, to the correct account. There are some countries that are excluded from creating an Amazon KDP account. You can Google those countries and find out if you're eligible, but the majority of countries are permitted to create a KDP account. I would start that process right now before you move forward any further. Let's get started with some software recommendations. Now with software, investing in the right software will be the difference between fast lane or slow lane publishing. The efficiency or time wasting with your publishing and selling books that are needed or publishing books that never sell. I can't stress enough the importance of buying the right software and considering it more as an investment with your long-term publishing journey. Because not having software really does slow you down. And as I mentioned, it makes your process so much more efficient and you're gonna be creating books that are needed by the customer, not publishing books that never ever sell. Now there are some key software publishing platforms that I recommend. Now you don't have to purchase them, but it is highly recommended. I can't stress that enough because these software platforms have been tried and tested. I've been using them for four years. And although there's an initial upfront payment with a couple of these, they do have lifetime access. So once you've paid it, it's an expense that you should absolutely invest in. But for the long-term journey of publishing, it's so well worth it. So let's look at the first one. KD Spy. So it's used for niche research and it helps you to determine the profitability of your niche before you begin to create your books. So by selecting the wrong niche and your chances of success are very slim. So it's a one-time payment of $69 for that lifetime access. And what I'm also rolling into this is to give you the opportunity of getting a free course. So I've got a $99 course that you can get for free by using my link in the description below to purchase KD Spy. So really, you're getting a $69 software product, but a $99 free course. So you're actually in front. So let me show you a bit about KD Spy and about that bonus course as well. So if I'm on Amazon, I've got KD Spy, which I've purchased, which comes a little Chrome extension up here. And what it helps me to do is to determine the profitability. So if I'm doing a search, just say I'm wanting to write about a beach book and it's a kid's beach book. So beach. So if I've got, even if we go to beach coloring book for kids. So if we go onto that one, what it'll end up doing is showing me the results. So if I go up here and I'll wait for KD Spy to load, what KD Spy will do will provide the average sales rank and the average monthly revenue. Now, what this will also determine for us is the popularity potential and the competition involved. So it's very, very competitive. So I wouldn't even consider going into this niche right now. Now, if you also did a 
uh, a filter here. You can look at the sales rank. So you do have a mermaid coloring book, but it does have nearly 5,000 reviews. So we're not going to be able to compete with something like that. But let's change things up a little bit. If we had, if we go back and we did, so, and we go enter, it's got 10,000 results. But if we have a look at KD Spy, we'll find out whether those keywords are profitable. So we can see the average sales rank here at the moment. We wait for this to load up. What we need to do is to get rid of what they call the outliners. So as we as we wait for this to load, it looks like the competition's quite high. It might reduce. Again, it's a good opportunity for us to look further into seeing whether it's worthwhile getting into this. Again, it's a great way of determining the competition is way too high. Let me try and find one though, a keyword or a, a niche that doesn't have the competition that we can really focus on. So if we wrote, it's writing. So we're even plain, let's try airplane books for kids. Let's have a look at this one. So it's 10,000 results still, but what does KD Spy tell us? We wait for the results to come up again, and let's see whether the average sales rank is going to be much better. So we wait for these to load up, and we can see the competition is still high. If we get rid of a couple of these, and then we do sales rank, we might keep that one but get rid of that one. We can see the, the sales is very, very good. Competition is still very high, very strong, but it's probably more in an area that we can compete. So there's only 57 reviews on this one, 10,748. So that's a first paper airplane book and design. If we look at this one, The Littlest Airplane, that's a kid's book, 65 reviews, monthly income of $2,000, average sales rank of 38,000. So we can actually see all different information here about the title, about the book. This one will actually take us to the book to have a closer look at it. So you can actually track the sales rank here. So if we go back to results and we look at uh, our tracking, so I'm going to go to books, book tracking. I've got one of my books here. So let's have a look at paperback. I'm going to go to to Archie the Bear Becomes a Big Brother. Let's have a look at the re results so far. You can see current sales rank, the price, and you can see how it's been tracking. So at some stage, it's been up to around about 45,000. Another 65,000 it's dropped recently, but there are a few of these times where it does that. So you can see how it's been tracking by doing that. But what this allows you to do is gives you instant information about your books that you're wanting to create and these niches. And if you were to try and go through and write down all these results, try and find out what the average sales rank was, what the book prices were, because that'll tell you the same information as well about the price of each of the book, the monthly sales, estimated revenue, the number of reviews. If you were trying to do that manually, it would take you forever. So KD Spy will save you a significant amount of time with your niche research and also provide some amazing information. So well worth the $69 to purchase for KD Spy. So that is the first software that I would recommend that you get if you're publishing. And remember, if you're publishing often, then it might be worth to purchase that software and then you get my $99 course for free. So you'll get all of these uh, lessons about exactly the best way to uh, look at niche research absolutely free. So definitely consider that. Check out the description below for more details about that. Continuing on with our software recommendations, the next one that I'd definitely recommend is Publisher Rocket. It's probably the more well-known of the software platforms. Again, I've been using Publisher Rocket for four years, and it is used specifically for keyword research, categories, Amazon advertising keywords, and niche trends. But it also definitely helps out with niche research as well. Accessibility-wise, you just have that one lifetime payment of $97, and you continue to get free upgrades as the platform and software improves. So 
With the keyword research and category research, it does go into a lot of depth with this. So let me give you a quick overview of the software, and it is definitely something that I recommend you looking into. Again, you can see the link in the description below. Once you download Publisher Rocket, you are given this dashboard right here. So we've got keyword research, competitor analyzer, category search, keywords for Amazon ads or AMS, and you've also got some tutorials. Let's just have a quick look at keyword search. So if we were wanting to create our books about beach theme, for, and we can also choose Kindle or Audible. So if you're doing those sort of books, you can do research there. Go get them rocket. Then this will provide you with a whole list of keywords that are popular within those keywords. So if we click on the magnifying glass, we go down here, click on all of these. Again, this will take you hours to get all this data. So what we're looking for, we've got a green light system here. So anything with green is low competition. Then we've got moderate competition. And when it goes red, then obviously it's high competition. You've got Amazon searches. So we're looking for green searches as well. We can see there's not enough searches in this category. So the holiday at Folly Beach, I'm not sure why that's coming up, or guest book for vacation home beach. You just probably wouldn't go into that. There's not enough research. But if we'll look into this one here, so it's moderately competitive beach books for women, which you may not have thought about. Very high monthly earnings, a lot of big searches. Let's now look at this a little bit more in depth. So what I'd probably do is, is write the beach books for women down. Therefore, we can look at it a bit more further and we can do an analysis on it. And this will actually take us to more data and trends. It'll actually give us a look at the different books that are currently trending in this particular category. So you can have a look at those. You can load more. You can see the age of the book. So that's the number of days it's been published for. The ABSR, which is the ranking, the number of pages of the book, and the keyword is keyword in that particular title for Beach Books for Women. And then what we can do is we can check out the actual, so we go to categories. So we can actually see the different categories that are here. Then we can do insights. So if we looked at, for example, books romance, you can look at the insights and you can see it's got a slight downward trend. So you probably wouldn't go into that. Let's get right out of here. We're going to go back to search again. Let's have a look at another one with low competition. So look at this one here. So we'll look at the Beach House guest book. Let's find out what books are trending in this because you may not have thought about publishing in this area. We're going to look further into this, look at the books that are in there. We can see the age of the books. We can see the daily sales as well. So the sales are quite low. So I probably wouldn't necessarily go into that, although if you had a book that is generating over $1,000 a month, that's pretty good. So you can look at further into those. Let's have a look at another search here. If we just did, um, we'll do four. And I normally always end in four because it then opens up the results for a bit wider interpretation. So we can go through these. We can look at the different books that are trending there. So that's the competition analyzer. And we can see the double daily sales. I'm mean, going to look at the monthly sales of this one, $56,000. Wouldn't it be nice to have a book that generates $56,000? <laughs> but we go to keyword search and we'll do the search there as well. It's going to be probably highly competitive. Four, and we go, go get them rocket. We can do a quick search of these. We can find out the competitive score. So letter tracing book, that's... A lot of search results, but very competitive. You can see the red here. It's trying to find that middle ground. So 67, still fairly competitive. What about letter tracing book for children? We can even go a little bit um, different. We can try one other one. So let's go. Let's just see if this is going to produce some different results. So we go down here and we can click all of these. And we can see the different results here. A lot, not many searches are happening there. But what you want to do is to start to look 
at a lot of different books. I wouldn't be going probably for letter tracing books anymore. I think they're too, I think the market's too saturated. Uh, but you could find one that may be not saturated. So what we do is just click, keep clicking these, having a bit of a look to see. So this one's only got one, so letter tracing workbook dinosaur ABC. Very low competition, but no one's searching for it. So why would you go into it? So we're looking for a green and a green. Green and green results are fantastic. You don't get them too often, but when you do, they're the ones that you need to get onto. I can show you the competition analyzer, which we did before. We can do a category search. So this will actually go through all the different categories. You can find out if there's a category that has books that might be um, starting to trend up. So let's have a look at unemployment insights. Growth is going down. You can see that. That's incredible how the number of searches has dropped considerably. So that's the power of this. Why would you publish in that category if you can see that it's been dropping so significantly? And that's why you need the power of software to give you this information. So if we keep going down here further, let's look at industry, sports and entertainment insights. It's on the upward trend, 26 month. You can see all that. You can see the related categories. You can see the different uh, ones that's here. So the sales number 10. So if you sold two books in this area right here, you'd be in the top 10. You'd need to sell 14 to get into the best sellers rank order to number one. Uh, there's 86 percentage of books in this category are publishers and Kindle unlimited 12%. It's just a great tool. And you can also look at these trends here. And what we can also do is look at different keywords that you can grab. Again, ideas for books. So if we did sports biomechanics as just a picking one randomly, we go to keyword search. We do a search here. We do sports biomechanics. We have a bit of a look. We do a search here. Find out the competitive scores. There's very little books that are selling there. So I probably wouldn't go into that. It's only earning $60. Again, you're eliminating books that you shouldn't be publishing in. And that's the beauty of this software. You can get so much information from it. There's also a way to do keywords for Amazon marketing as well. That's a quick summary of Publisher Rocket. I would definitely recommend you look into it and it will give you such an advantage to anyone that doesn't use this software. It provides insights into great keywords to use in your book titles, niches you can go into, competition, categories, Amazon keywords for your ads, but also provides plenty of tutorials as well if you want to look further into using Publisher Rocket and how to find keywords and everything in between. Continuing with our theme of software recommendations, the next one is Canva. So Canva is used for your book covers, your manuscripts, your marketing and advertising. So it is on a subscription plan. So you can get a free account with Canva. You do have limited tools that you can use on the free plan. I've upgraded to Canva Pro and it starts at $12 US per month. But it has just been such a massive game changer for my business. So rather than having to outsource various different design elements, such as the marketing and advertising uh, book covers, and even formatting, I can do it all within Canva. So overall, you do save a significant amount of money. Let me quickly just jump onto Canva and I can show you how Canva works and the power of Canva. And then you can make a, dick, a call to see whether that is a software tool you'd want to use. But I really just don't know how you could do publishing without it. Uh, again, check out the description below. Got the link for the details of how to join. So it just makes sense to have a design tool, particularly when books are used for design. Uh, we just want to make sure we get the right professional look happening with all of our books. So I'm just on my account now. You can see the number of different things that I'm using for 
uh, or using Canva for with YouTube videos. We've got different publications I've got there, uh, review templates. So if we go to create a design, you can do a YouTube thumbnail. You can do a whole lot of different things. Do a, a book cover. So if we go custom design and we wanted to do an eight by actually we need to make sure it's inches i keep forgetting that and we go create new design then this will give us the template straight up for the book we can also go to different designs we can find out what they are we can do a template here so if we had beach then it would give us some different ideas for book cover design what you need to make sure you do, and I'll do a tutorial about book cover design using Canva later, is you need to make sure all the elements that you use, you're interchanging and changing around. You can't just create a book cover and make it look like this. You have to make changes, okay? That's one of the key things about the terms of use of Canva. Just make sure you change, your, change them around. But as you can see, it's just so easy to use, and you can even grab... Uh, so what we might do is grab some elements of this one. So we might grab that one and we can put it up there, get rid of that one there. We can put that there. We can go down. We can grab this element here. We can put that there. We can change things around, whatever you want to. It is just such an amazing tool that you can use for your book cover design. You can see all the different things that they provide with Canva. It is sensational and I'll show you the way that I do manuscripts and book cover design using Canva later, but it is one of the best tools I've ever used for cover design or even manuscripts and I just use it so often for so many elements of my business. So that is Canva. Check out the description below and you can find out more about this design software tool. Just to finish on our software recommendations, I also want to go through the overall costs, but also introduce you to a couple of Chrome extensions. So if we're looking at the cost of what we've uh, been looking at, so KD Spy is $69, plus you get that bonus niche research or mastering niche research course uh, if you use my link but you get that lifetime access, $97 lifetime access for Publisher Rocket. And then if you were to get Canva, that's $12 per month for the subscription. So you have an upfront payment of $178 and an ongoing cost of just $12 per month. Now for a publishing business, even a hobby, for that initial cost, you'd pay far more for so many different things if you're starting a business. If you think you were starting any form of business with um, the software or the resources you'd have to buy, it's just incredible and would far be far more expensive than $178. So you've got those initial total investments if you want to really publish well on Amazon KDP. And I've got all the links in the description. Now, if you wanted to look at one other or a couple of others, there is BookBolt and Helium 10. So BookBolt is a brilliant feature to format your paperback and hardbacks for uploading to Amazon. And I do provide a, a lesson later on in the course where we use BookBolt to format our covers. So you do have a monthly subscription starting at $12, but I do have a discount code using Life Graduate 20, which gives you 20% off. And Helium 10, look, it's, I call it the Rolls Royce because it has a lot of the key features that um, Publisher Rocket and KD Spy have, but it's on that ongoing $29 subscription, which can add up over a while. But you can get discounts on uh, the subscription using my links below. Next Level 10 will give you 10% off uh, for every month and Next Level KDP 24, 20% off for six months. Let me quickly show you BookBolt though and how I would use that for our cover formatting, but I'll go into greater depth later on. So if I was to select this one here, I've created the cover because you can just go to Project and New Project and create it. I'll go through more in the Masterclass later on in the course, but what this allows you to do is to do all your cover 
information right in the one spot uh, which is amazing so if we just go here it just shows you how quickly I can do my cover on the template that's provided rather than fiddling around with other uh, platform to to try and get it right this one gets it perfect straight away I don't get any rejections from Amazon KDP and that was one of my biggest hurdles when I first started was getting these rejections because my cover formatting wasn't meeting their requirements and it was just so frustrating but I can get that done within a minute and a half and we're ready to go I just have to save it and that will save it in the format that's ready to upload to Amazon and that's the beauty of BookBolt but BookBolt also has key other features as well you can do product research seller search cloud search book scout keyword research it has many different features but i mainly use it for the book bolt studio for my covers but there's no reason why you can't use it for all these other features as well which gives you a huge advantage so that's book bolt and let's just finish off with a couple of the chrome extensions so the first one is called amz extension expander and you'll see the little emblem there and the other one is D, ds amazon quick view and that will give you the BSR which is the book ranking on Amazon I'm going to very quickly show you where these are but just go to Chrome extensions and please download these two because you'll be utilizing those when we do our niche research uh, later on so the two extensions we've got the AMZ suggestion expander here and the DS Amazon quick view right here so DS Amazon quick view will give you your rankings in the ASN uh, number right here you can see how they're all listed right here without that Chrome extension they don't show up and you've actually got to go into the actual book so if we were to do, go into this one here you'd actually have to go into the book scroll down and then have a look at the number right there whereas the Chrome extension gives you the information straight up so you don't need to worry about that you can see it's the rank is loading up right now now the last one was the the suggestion expander so if we were up here and we were typing for our beach books for books for and you can see all the different ones that that come up when you start typing these words and you can see beach books for children beach books 2024 beach book bestsellers new releases these are what people are typing in addition to the main keywords that people are typing for on Amazon so it's worthwhile getting this extension as well to see what people need so it's a free download too so make sure you download those two Chrome extensions go back check out those software products that I recommend definitely KDS by publisher rocket and Canva as a starting point then book bolt if you want to use that for your book cover formatting but you can use Canva for it. It just takes a little bit longer to do. It's time in the course for you to take action. Because what is the most common reason people fail at KDP? Well, they fail to take action or they delay taking action. By delaying, you're procrastinating. And it's the key reason why people don't get books sold, they don't start making the books at the very beginning, they try and get through a whole course and then decide to take action. Well, you need to take those steps as you progress through this course. Don't just watch the whole thing and then go back. So I want you to take two key pieces of, or key action steps right now. Your current action items are to invest in a minimum of one piece of paid software to fast track your publishing. And number two, start experimenting with niche research. Jot down some ideas and become familiar with any software you have purchased. Now I'll leave the links again in the description. I'll make it as easy as I can for you to take that action. But again, you don't want to reflect back and wish that you'd taken action earlier or you're sitting on your hands procrastinating, not knowing where to start. Well, this is where you need to start to succeed at publishing. I've been there and done that. I've now created multiple best-selling books, sold thousands and thousands of books, 
and I want you to do the same, but it only starts by taking action. So take these first steps right now. And welcome to this lesson on niche research for Amazon KDP. It will be one lesson where I spend a little bit more time on because it's just so important. When we're looking for a niche, it's an area that people are interested in purchasing a book from. And we can sub-niche down to get a topic. And we almost need to get micro niches. So what will our book be about? That's the main area of interest for us with niching down and finding a particular niche. So when we go on to Amazon KDP, you'll find that they offer a number of different departments or categories. One category might be children's books, but under children's books, there's always different sub niches. Let me quickly show you what I mean. So when we look at books, you can see if we go to business and money, you click there, and then it'll bring us all these different sub niches under business and money. So there'd be about another 15 different sub niches. We go back to books and we might choose science and math. We go there and this brings up another roughly 12, 14 different sub niches under science and math. So you can see this is where it's important to try and niche down in a particular category and don't just get the first thing. So if we go to chemistry, this will provide another set of sub niches under chemistry itself. So you keep going down as far as you can to sub niche as far down as you can to get as uh, close a niche as you can. What we want to do is go a mile deep and a centimeter wide or an inch wide. So the value of finding a high need but low competition niche is just really important. We need to make sure that we're doing what we can to get that information. Because if your niche is too broad, if you just went under chemistry without going even further down and sub-niching down, your book will be very, very hard to find. You'll be one amongst thousands and thousands, if not millions. So what do we actually look for? What's a measurement that we can use to judge the performance of our book? Well, it is called a BSR. So when we go back to Amazon in a moment, you'll see through our Chrome extension of DS Amazon Quick View that we'll see this number here. And that is a representation of where that book sits across all the millions of books on Amazon. This book sits at 125 ranking out of all the millions. So number one ranking being the best. And then some of your books, if you create them, might be in the millions. And that means that it's ranked in the millions of all the books that are on Amazon. So we want to make sure we can try and get our BSR under 100, which is great. And that comes with getting reviews, with getting sales, and making sure that you have a high quality book. Let me quickly show you where the BSR is when you go to Amazon and you've got the DS Amazon Quick View hooked in as a Chrome extension. So here's the number right here, 66,000. 82,000 BSR, 95. I've also got the Helium 10 extension on, and this will also show uh, the different numbers for these books, but I might actually go and turn that off just so it doesn't get confusing. And so I've turned off the Helium 10 extension just so it's not confusing, but you can see number five here. This is in new releases in books, that's where it's ranked. And if you hover over the top around here, you can also get uh, some extended data and information. But as we scroll down here, you can see the BSR numbers, 54, then we go down to 96, 104. And that's where those books are actually ranked. And we do need to keep an eye on that information. It'll give us a great insight of where these books are actually ranked. Now, the other program or software that I'll use during my niche research in a moment, which I'll show you, is Publisher Rocket. So you'll see a combination of Publisher Rocket and KD Spy being used at the same time for my niche research. You could just use KD Spy by itself, but you'll see that in combination, both Publisher Rocket and KD Spy are the best. But let's get into how I do niche research as an example and a tutorial. The first thing I always do when I'm doing my niche research is to go into incognito mode, meaning that 
none of my search is going to be tracked because I don't want that to obscure other searches that I've been conducting. So as I mentioned, I'm going to be using two different tools here. I'm going to be using Publisher Rocket, which is this one right here. And you can purchase Publisher Rocket using my link. And I also use KD Spy, which I'll bring up once we're into the process. So let's get into what we're looking at right now. So firstly, I'll jump onto the best sellers of Amazon KDP. And I want to be searching for various different topics that might be trending at the current time. So that could be a starting point, but what I normally do is just run my eyes over these books, see if there's anything currently trending, and then I can start to look at the different categories. So at the moment we're going through here, and I'm just sort of thinking grow rich. I've seen, uh, there was another financial one, the psychology of money. The number one bestseller is Atomic Habits, so people are looking at different habits and goals they're doing. But let's break into a different area altogether. Art and photography. These could be low content books. There might be high content books, but it's important to go through this process. So what I'm looking for are a couple of things that are standing out. So if I go down here, I'm looking at vision boards, so goal setting is obviously very clear at the moment. We've got two vision boards here. We've got two different people that are doing it, ranked 264 and 270. See if there's anything else like that. We're scrolling through. Okay, so I'm just looking at here. There's nothing really that's standing out at this point in time. So what I need to do is go down a little bit further within the niche. So let's try, let's go drawing. This might be our topic for today. What we're looking for are the different rankings of the books. And also we might even go down a bit closer or a bit more specific. So let's go figure drawing. So we're really niching down. Again, under figure drawing, we need to look at the books that are currently trending. So we can go down here, look at these kinds of books. We can also identify using Publisher Rocket, the different categories that we're looking at. How to draw in uh, Nimi. I may not get the pronunciation, pronunciation right of these. 1007 drawings to sketch in five minutes. That might be an interesting one. Let's see a little bit more about this book. And when it was published and some of the details so december 12 2022 so it's been around for just over a year we can see inside it here we scroll down they've done a really good description let's look at some of the feedback they've done good a plus content they're showing the steps ranked at 10,000. this is a video so this is a great way of identifying if you can actually get into this niche or not. We keep scrolling down. You can see some of the illustrations and pictures that people have done as part of reviews. So you can see those. There we go. So we're looking at books that we can actually complete ourselves. You can see the different reviews here. All very mostly a very very positive which is a great result and you can see what they're doing there so is this something that we can get into ourselves so what we do is scroll back up and let's go learn how to draw and we're going to put that into publisher rocket so we're going to do keyword research let's see how popular this is within books so we use publisher rocket learn how to draw so what we're going to do is go through these different ones here, learn how to draw for adults, learn how to draw for kids, different age groups, which is important to identify. So we go through, we click these ones. Then what we're looking at is a competitive score. Anything close to 100 is getting very, very competitive. We're looking for something that is probably around about 50 or less, if possible. And we're also looking at the estimated Amazon searches. So we're trying to get a bit of a combination. And we can look here, learn how to draw for kids 9 to 12. It's getting a lot of Amazon searches. It's fairly popular or moderately competitive. Good 
earnings and number of pages 136 on average if we go down a bit further we can see some other things here as well so learn how to draw a cat what other ones have we got here let's let's identify this one here learn how to draw for kids 9 to 12. so we click here and we have a look at the different categories and different books learn how to draw cool stuff learn how to draw the animals we can find out how long they've been there for so this is the amount of days this one's relatively young that's the one we just saw before so 392 days you can see it's bringing good monthly sales and we can check it out which we did before and we can also look at the categories so we can see these are the different categories figure drawing and we can see the insights so let's have a look at the insights that are here as part of this book we can see it's got good growth of 56 sales per month so it's on the upward trajectory we can see sales of 101 doesn't really give us much else information here so if we go go back again to see related categories and what we're going to do here is also look at the keywords so we can go back and we'll just go back into this one again and what I want to do is actually look at the keywords so this is the keywords for the category these keywords are related to the category and may help with placement based on uh, rockets analysis sometimes book titles or author names may find their way into this list rocket does its best to remove them so you can see the different keywords and you could use those within your Amazon ads or in your back-end keywords when you're loading the book to Amazon KDP so very handy so you can have a look at these sales number one is 101 sales sales number 10 in the ranking of that category is 11 you can see 53 of publishers publish in this area we can look at different books here and how long they've been around for how to draw everything learn to sketch 175 animals so they seem to be quite popular if you look at the ABSR or the ABS uh, the ABSN that's a277 278 days some of these books are doing really really well how to draw everything 32,000 that is unbelievable so you can see the different categories this books under it's under drawing which would be quite competitive because you'd need to get 167 sales to get to that so maybe not what you want to do but again let's look at the insights it's going down so we want to go back and we want to have a look at different coloring books if we wanted to let's go to insights down on that one as well let's have a look at uh, we've got animals we got cartooning so let's look at the insights here category growth of 11 so we've been able to pick up a bit of information from this so far what we want to do is learn how to draw fun and easy and we what we would like to try and do is see if this is a book that we can get into but what we're going to do is copy that I want to go back to Amazon and I want to put that into the search right here and let's see how many other books are in here so it's got 5,000 results which is okay this is where I use KD spy I want to find out if it's an area that I can compete in so we go to KD spy right here and this will load up KD spy pro and it will provide the sales rank the average sales rank we can remove some if what we call their outliners so you can see the books here any like th the top three or the sorry the highest rank three we remove so we'll do one two and three so these are the three highest ranked books meaning they might be just poor quality books and not selling average sales rank is now 153 so anything about 150,000 or thereabouts is a good book to pursue what we're also looking at we want to see the uh, reviews so we can compete with books maybe with about 150 reviews so you click on there and what we're looking for are books ranked at about 150,000 or less with um, about 150 reviews or less so I've got one here two and 
that's probably about it so it's fairly high in competition so I'm not sure if I would consider going into that but it could be one if you wanted to look a bit further let's just do a quick another analysis of some other books that we can look into potentially in this area so I'm going to scroll down here let's have a look at these rankings how to draw so it's pretty high the cover is not great how to draw animals so that might be another one let's try and let's put that in there so we go back up to here because this might be more niche how to draw animals so you might want to do how to draw animals for kids or you can even break it down to an age group let's do how to draw animals for kids so we've got 10,000 results. If we reduce that just to have draw animals, it's how many results? 20,000. How to draw animals for kids, maybe five to seven. All right, 5,000 results still. So we look down here, you can see the different books. You can see their rankings. These are quite simple, it looks like to, to uh, organize and, and do. So let's have a look at KD Spy again. And we could even copy that and put into publisher rocket as well so let's go to KD spy how to draw animals uh, for kids what we're doing now we'll get rid of those outliners so that one that one and maybe I think that's the next highest average sales rank now 35,048 so that's much better but let's look at the reviews we want to see if there's any books with 150 reviews or less so we'll just say from here and we'll see whether this is an area we can compete in so we'll call, we'll include that one so one two three four five six so there are there are six books with 150 reviews or less that we know we can compete with because trying to compete with books with 4,000 reviews is going to be very, very challenging. But if there's 150 reviews or less, we can compete and the rankings are very, very good. Estimated monthly sales, you can see the monthly sales there. The length of the book you can see as well. So what I would do, I would use that main keyword. I've used uh, uh, KD Spy to identify if it's worth investigating that niche more. Then what I could also do is copy that, go back to Publisher Rocket, and I'm going to go to Keyword Search, and I'm going to do a new search here. Let's plug that one in. Go get them Rocket, and let's see whether this brings up something and identifies. So 57, that's pretty good. Estimated monthly searches, 2,850. We can do our research here, and we can find out what books we would be competing with. We can investigate those. We can do the look inside. You can find out what books are doing really well. Look at their covers. Look at the colors they're using. Look at the different illustrations they're using. Look at the description. What are they using to attract customers? We can see, um, we can see the different categories. So if we go to this one right here, we can look at the categories that they're in. So it's a pretty competitive category. If we go to the insights tool, you can see it's down a little bit. But if we go back one more, let's go back here. Let's go to this one here. It might be a similar one. I'm just having a look. This is the youngest of the books. So let's have a look at this one. And we're going to go to insights for drawing, music and photography, art drawing. I may have covered this before, up 36 sales per month. So that would be a good category to get into. And you can do, we can look at these different categories and when they say selectable, Amazon allows you to place your book directly into this categories of placement. So you can have a look at the different selectable categories. These ones are what they call ghost categories. But if you select this one here, Crafts for Children. So let's do the Insights tool here. It's gone down a fair bit, but it still could be a category you'd like to get into. Let's have a look at another one. Let's go this one right here, Insights. That's pretty steady as well. So I think that could be a great little keyword, a niche to get into, if you're happy to look 
at different books. We can go and check it out. We can have a look at how the book's been put together. You can look inside the book. It all looks pretty basic. You could do that using a software platform like Canva. You can see the additional details, the page numbers. They've used A plus content there. And you can also see it's ranked at 6,860. It's got some positive or it's got some videos that have been uploaded here. So you can have a look and see how the book's put together. And you can also see what the reviews are like and if there's ways that you can improve the quality of book. That's a great little insight into the process I take to investigate if a book is going to be suitable for me to pursue and to look at different categories to see what category would be best to place my book. And welcome to this lesson on creating your title and subtitle. It's important we look at how we put our title and subtitle together, along with ensuring that we don't infringe on any trademarks or copyright. Let's get into it right now. So firstly, your title serves two key purposes. The first one is your SEO or your search engine optimization, meaning that when people are searching for those terms within your title or the content that you're creating, you want your book to be ranked quite high or the best it can be. On page one is ideal. Number two, you're attracting the customer to your particular kind of book. And that's where title and subtitle keywords uh, become really important because it's what customers are looking for. So ultimately, your goal is to have your book appear when popular search terms are typed into the search bar of Amazon. And you use your keywords from your niche research in your title, your subtitle, and the remaining words that you can't fit into your title or subtitle are used in your seven backend keywords when you're uploading your book to KDP. So your seven keywords will be other words that you'd really like to be ranked for as part of your book. I wanted to cover off as well, as part of this lesson, the do's and the do nots. So do this, use keywords that make sense and relate directly to your book. There's no point creating titles where there, it's, there's confusion about what your book is. And if you've got a very high profile, if you're uh, an actor or you're in the media or you've got a big social media presence, then you could pot potentially create titles uh, that are a little bit different but because we're self-publishers, we need to really focus on those keywords. So make sure you use the auto suggestions to help craft your title from Amazon. And I'll show you some examples soon. And each word in your title should be linked to its optimization. So you need to think about what words within your title would you like to be ranked for so that when customers are typing that into the search bar, your book would come up on page one, maybe page two. So do not do this though. Keyword stuff. And what I mean by including random keywords in your title or your subtitle, just because you want to try and get the keywords in, it needs to make sense. It needs to flow. Don't use other brands or author names. Uh, and worse still, do not infringe on trademark terms. So do those searches to make sure you're not in, um, impacting any trademarks because it's a quick way to get your account terminated or there could be legal ramifications for doing that. So titles are going to be very important for you and subtitles um, are as important. But then if you can't find the words within your title or subtitle that make sense, uh, from your research, just make sure you put them in your seven keywords that you want to be ranked for when you upload your book. So let's just go to uh, a way of collecting your keywords and crafting your titles just to make sure that you're um, going to get the best title for your book. One of the last things I want to cover on creating a title and subtitle is the use of keywords and ensuring that you don't infringe on any trademarks. So as a website, called USPTO, which is the United States Patent and Trademark Office. It's important that you conduct a search trademark just to ensure that you're not infringing on any. So it is USPTO.gov forward slash trademarks forward slash search. 
I'm going to go to that website right now and give you a little bit of an idea of how that works. So just say you wanted to do a search, you go to the uspto.gov website. What we're going to be doing is just doing a quick search. So what we need to do is go search trademarks. So we go here and we go trademark search system. Once we're in here, we can start typing the words that we were looking for when we're looking to see if we're infringing on any. So if we did a book that we wanted to call something to do with Fortnite series, so you can see how Fortnite is live and registered. So you wouldn't go anywhere near that. Same if you had a book and you wanted to call it Lego characters. So if we go search, and if we go down, you can see Lego that you just do not want to go into. You can see how it's many, you know, covered many, many times. What happens if we did Monster Truck? So we go there, and we have a look, and we can see Word Monster Truck is actually registered here. So that's where you're going to be careful with the different sorts. So what we can do, we can look at it further, and we can find the different things that we can actually publish under or we shouldn't. So we can't do carry bags, tote bags, travel bags, suitcase packing organizers in the nature of packing cubes. That you cannot do. If we go down further, we can see there's ones that are also dead as well. So you could potentially look at making a book, but I would do some further research to have a look and see. If something came up like Monster Trucks and it's listed in a lot of different places, then I just wouldn't go near it. It's just something that I wouldn't do. Whereas if I went and did a book here, we'll call it um, Learn to Write in my title. Let's have a look here. There's nothing specifically that's learn to write. If you had learned to write the right way, then you wouldn't go near that. You can sort of see that it's um, providing writing training workshops for law students. So I wouldn't probably have that title, but learn to write by itself. It looks like it could be all right. Learn to write. So it's learn write. There's nothing about learn to write in here. Write to learn, write to learn. So that could be used. But what I want you to do is, if you're doing a title, put it in here. If you think it's too risky, don't do it. That's my main advice. But go to USPTO trademark search, check, and you just go to this little click here and see if you can actually write something. So let's just do dot marker. Dot markers is dead. Dot and dot markers. So you could use that in your book. But again, do a thorough research because you just do not want to be caught out for a trademark that you're uh, that you shouldn't be going to. So anything that you know is a trademarked term. So hopefully this helps and make sure you do your thorough research for trademark and infringement with uh, with your book titles. And welcome to this lesson where I want to introduce you to book interior and manuscripts for no, low and high content books. There is a different strategy that you use for each of these different kinds of books. So no content can be very easy to create yourself. You can use free software, you can create a free Canva account, you can download free templates, you can cr create a free notebook that could be uploaded to Amazon KDP. Very easy, but the barrier to entry is also easy, which means it's more competitive. Low content depends on the book that you're publishing. So it might be a coloring book. You might need to use AI technology or outsource illustrations for coloring books. So they can be easily easy to create, but there's a little bit more difficulty for those. Mid content can be more copy complicated, may require outsourcing components like a cover design, illustrations, and it does become a little bit more uh, complicated but less competitive. And then you've got high content books. So they are time consuming. 
to create books of over 10,000 words up to, say, 100,000 word books or more, if you're writing those books yourself, it takes a long time because then you need to write, edit, get everything together. It can be a long process. But if you are able to develop those books and you are even outsourcing a high percentage of those elements, the reward for effort can be very high. And the book can also be converted into multiple formats, paperback, hardback, ebook, audiobook, multiple platforms like Ingram Spark, Drafter Digital, uh, Barnes & Noble. You can get your book out to a lot more places. Now, if we look at the course lessons in this course, you can apply most of them to publishing any of these forms of books. However, there's lots more content to come regarding the game-changing publishing of high-content books. So I've published them before, never really made a course on it before, but I think that is my next big move. And I'd love to help you out with that space. So just keep an eye on that because that could be a massive game changer for you and could significantly enhance your chances to develop a long-term passive income on these kinds of books. Might take some more time, might be required to be part of a strong community of people, like-minded people that want to create those books. And the opportunity is huge because it's less competitive. But watch this space now for these kinds of books. So we're going to go to the next lesson. Keep in mind that if you are writing a high content book, that I will be creating more content around that at a later date about how to create your structure of those books, how you put them together, how you can potentially outsource the writing component of it, a component of writing high content books. But for now, the next lesson is about creating a manuscript for no, low and mid content books. But remember, the majority of all these lessons you can still apply to creating high content books. Anyway, that's a lesson. Let's get ready for the next one. So there's a really good sample of the KDP Fast Track course. Now keep in mind, they're just four sections of the 13 sections of the course. So if you've enjoyed that, you might like to join my self-publishing academy, which is on school. Now to get the details of school, you just need to go down to the description of this video, follow the link, and that will take you to my school, which you can then have a look at some further resources and join the community if you feel like you'd like to take your self-publishing to the next level. So thanks so much. Hope you enjoyed this video. Look forward to seeing you in my school community. So until then, goodbye.